Once our part is done in Inventor, we're going to bring it straight into our CAM software. The first step in Edge CAM is to create our stock. In our stock, we're going to leave it as auto stock, and for this activity, we're going to leave each one of our offsets at zero. Select OK. The next step is to make sure that your CPL is correct. RGB equals XYZ, and each one of them should be pointing into the positive. That's the way we designed it in Inventor, and it has come in correctly. We'll now move on to the third step, which is for the Feature Finder. In the Feature Finder, on the Mill tab, make sure that you have the 2D Pockets and the 2D Bosses selected, and select OK. We now want to check to see how Edge Cam has interpreted the part. It has found a 2D boss that makes the lip. It has found a 2D pocket. It has found a 2D pocket or 2D boss that makes the body, and an additional 2D boss that makes the part that our vise is going to hold on to. We are now complete with our design mode and going to go into manufacture mode. In manufacture mode, make sure you select the right post that is for your machine. This time, I'm going to select the IntelliTech post. Once in here, I'm going to set up the strategies and choose the tooling that I want in the order of operations. The first thing I'd like to do, since it puts the most force onto the part, is to get rid of the pocket. I'm going to right-click on the pocket from the Features tab. In the Features tab, when I right-click from the selections that I have, I'm going to pick Roughing Operation. It's going to ask me if I want to select any boundaries, and at this time, I do not. I'll select Done. Check each one of the tabs each time to make sure that you have the current settings that you want for the part. I do want to climb mill the pocket. I do want a 50% step over from the tool that I have, and for this activity, I'm going to use an offset of zero for the roughing operation. On the tooling tab, I'm going to go straight to find the tool that we want, and we want to use an end mill. For this activity, we've designed this entire container around a 3 8 end mill, or tool 5. Select. That will automatically set up the feed rate, the plunge rate, and the spindle speed. On the depth tab, I'm going to leave the clearance of the default to 0.25. I'm going to leave the level associative to the feature and the depth associated to the feature at zero. For my cut increment, I'm typically in ring shape, a prototyping material that I do somewhere between half of the tool diameter to a third of the tool diameter, which is somewhere between 0.1875 and 0.125, with 0.1875 being the max. Select OK. You can now see the roughing operation. I'm going to simulate the roughing operation to make sure that everything is working the way that we want. Once the roughing operation has been verified, we're going to move on to our next operation. The next operation I want is to create the 2D boss that makes up the lip. From the Features tab, select the 2D boss that makes the lip, right-click, and select Profiling. I again do not need any boundaries for this operation. Select Done. In the tooling, for right now, we'll leave the offset, the Z offset, and the XY offset at zero. Tooling, I will select Use Current Tool to maintain the 3 eighths of an inch tool that we use for the roughing operation. In the depth tab, we will leave everything as it was for the last one. Select OK. I can see from that pass that that pass is barely or not going to be able to get all the way to the edge of my part. From the Sequence tab, I will now edit the profiling operation to offset it away so I can do two profiling operations. Once I open it up, select OK, and I'm going to create an offset only in the XY. I'm going to offset 50% of the tool diameter, 0.1875, half of the 3 8 tool. That will then offset that out to make sure that I go ahead and clear each one of the corners. I will now reproduce that profiling operation to step in all the way to the part. Back to the Features tab, right-click, Profiling Operation, 
no boundaries, leave everything alone, except this time remove the XY, leave the tooling and use current tool, and leave everything in the depth tab alone. I now have two offset concentric profiles that are going to go around and clean off everything that's necessary to create the lip. I'll now create the bottom 2D boss. Right click from the features tab, profiling, no boundaries, no offsets, use current tool, and the same depths, and select OK. We'll now simulate each one of the operations to make sure that we have everything the way that we want. Once the verifier is complete, the next step we want to do is run a quick comparison. The comparison is this little red and green step that will allow us to compare the inventor file to the edge cam file. Anything that is in blue is something that was not manufactured. Anything that is red is something that was manufactured too much and everything that is green is where the edge cam and the inventor file match. We now have everything for the base finished and are ready to produce the code. Make sure you're not in homework mode. Come to the NC tab for generate code. Select generate code. Typically we can use the part name for whatever the part was called. We'll open it in the editor so that we can make sure the code is the way that we want. Select OK. Enter the program ID number. Select OK. The programmer's name. And you can now see that we have all the code necessary to make that part.